He said hello to a couple of girls at the bar who acted hard and showed no mercy to him and told him to go away. They turned away immediately from him, maybe smelled that whiskey after all, maybe smelled his mind, made him feel unwanted as death. He needed some obsession, he thought, or some old spice. The poor man's cologne was just not doing it tonight. Being judged did not lay him flat on his back. In fact, that's the card he wanted to be dealt. Stone face tonight. He let the girls be, walked away, took a piss. There were cats in these walls. He could hear them while he pissed. They were speaking through their eyes and the walls could not stop them. They whispered, too good to last. He moved back down the bar to the pool table and on the way he saw an acquaintance at a table with her boyfriend. They spoke briefly and she told him she had just moved into a building not one block away from his and before he could answer he was being pulled by the arm away from them, away from the pool table, away from the voices, away from the light away from the music and out the back door into the fenced-in backyard behind the bar. I haven't got over you, she said. Damn, Helen, I don't know what to tell you. You know I got love for you. You are so fucking rude. I know I am. I've been an asshole all night, haven't I? He betrayed his lessened self out there with her in the usual way, by the grand smile that overtook his wet lips, by the liquidity of his movement, by his relaxation. Were he only to give himself away, stumble a bit, spill the drink, vomit even, then she would not have been so offended by his insensitive language. Rather, he came off as being careful and untouched, and she despised him. He despised himself. It is the drunk, the madman, and the fool who can take a tremendous fall lightly.